Yes, quite a lot. Uh, back in, in late 60s, uh, I used to have a band and we did have stores in Venezuela Mission. So I came here to buy instruments like twice a year. And the first store that I came to me was a store called Ace Music. Now it's called Space Music, run by Seminole Indians. We, they became my friends because they take the fly. And uh, we see how it's all right there all the time, they my friends. So after that, I came to see concerts. Like every time I, I found out I played with my was playing, I came to see them and the purple. And all those things. My dad was a musician, so I grew up uh, surrounded by music. So I went to music school when I was. Eight years old to, to study classical music because my dad wanted me to, you know, to learn. So that was my boss and my thing. So I told him, you know what, I don't want to make a musician. So I started playing with local bands, like with the friends and stuff. And in 1968, I was, I, we used to be paid for gigs in, uh, in private parties and clubs. And uh, I asked, I told the band, you know what, instead of spending the money, let's put it together and then let's pay for a recording session so we can record a demo. So we did that and we went to this studio that my dad used to tell me to take me. And the uh, engineer was a friend of my dad and he said, okay, come on. So we were doing the, the demo and then one guy showed up in the studio and asked, what is this? Who are they? And the engineer said, oh, this is uh, their kids from a friend of mine, they do the demo. Okay, when they finish it, tell them to go to the office and talk to me. So the next day I was singing and then this other guy came in and asked, what are these guys? And he said, well, he said, okay, I'm from CBS. So this is my car, tell him to go. So uh, we went, I went with my dad to CBS and Polygram. And my dad was a friend of the guy from Polygram, so I ended up signing Polygram. So we had a contract for four singles, the four, four five. So we did that, and after that, that I was, a, you know, I was a, 18 or something, and so I went to the CBS and I got my first contract with CBS. So my first record came out in 1976, we did it in Venezuela. But for the second one, uh, when I toured with Armando Romero in Europe, I met this guy in London, Clive Chapman, who is, he, he, he was a bass player for Jeff Beck. And he said, ah, this one was fun. I have a friend in, in Trinidad, my, my brother, uh, Stan, he has a studio. So he had a call, I gave him a call, so I went to record the second record from his hand. And for the third one, I was very delicious, so I told Celia, you know what? I want to do my record in New York. How much is going to cost? So I called the friends of the friends of the friends of the friends so I put a, a small budget together so I went to New York and we did an electric lady, Jimmy Anderson. So that was amazing. Okay, after Venezuela went to the crisis and other people left the country, so Venezuelans are all over the world. Right? So it's important to us like to play for our people, I mean for Venezuelans, because the energy that we get in return is so great. And for we went to uh, Dublin and to um, Bahne, to uh, Essen in Germany and Australia and some of my friends in Japan. So the Venezuelans are all over the place. 
So it's great for us to bring a little bit of comfort and, and love to, to, to those guys. And then we see their faces and this is like a, something like so great that you don't see when you go to guys. So it's sort of like, they are all great, but it's, you know, they don't have this, this uh, hole in their heart. So if it if feels really good, plus it gives us the, the chance to stand. I mean, because the, the very good thing is Venezuelans now are married to people from different countries. Like an American girl is married to a Venezuelan, and a Venezuelan girl is married to a German guy. And a German guy is married to a girl from Colombia, so it's, it's a big mix. mix. It's like a new world. People, you know, all, every, everybody with everybody. So the music get to get to get promoted by itself. No radio, no social network. It's because oh, I listen to this guy, and then the world says, oh, this is this guy. So I, I play, and when we play in. Uh, in Baden, there was this guy who was an American guy. I said, I didn't know him. He said, well, I'm a fan of him. He doesn't know what. Wow, it's, it's been a while to be played for large audiences. It's, it's a mixture of fear because. I know people are expecting it, but you know, different generations that don't know us, you know, kids, young people. And uh, this time it's like a challenge this time to play a show because, you know, I, I come from uh, the 60s and 70s. That all the, the pyrotechnic didn't exist, and you know, all the lead screen didn't exist. So people used to go to the concert to listen to the music. Now people go to, to the concert to see a show. So you have to prepare the show, like get, get good images. The sound, you have to be better than the guy who played before you. So it's, like, it's a lot of work and rehearse the band and uh, get the the, uh, the performance in order so that people get that like get, when the concert is over people go like, wow that was amazing you know? so I'm, I'm i'm really excited but i'm really concerned about the, uh, the logistic we have to go to this place, this city from the other by car. This is what I play, then then by boat, and then I love my boss. So it's gonna be, you know, like like play train and all movies. Remember that movie? It's the movie? Yeah. So I'm really worried about the, we don't know where we're going to find. It, it, it's seen that we're going to. But for uh, uh, for the moment we have Luckily, we have this great group. So I hired this, this guy, he's from Argentina, Alexander. They call him Vive. He used to work with uh, Ricardo Montenegro, Ricardo Horna, Julian Ricardo. So he's a guy who, like, is incredible. So I've been talking to him, and he told me, you know what? This is my thing now, so concentrate on your performance and take care of everything. So it's been great. I talk to him every day. You know, I'm gonna play drums again. I haven't played drums in quite a while. So everybody's excited, and we're gonna have fun. Well, I've been meaning to write a book about how do I get here from the beginning. To and people I could work with, things that I learned, things that I, I have seen. And it's, it's kind of a documentary. So 
now I want to be in the middle of our weeks. I'm going to start to start. Like, I got some days that I'm not going to be working, so I want to sit down and start writing this, this thing. And I think I, I, I have to do it with people because my, my fans or the people who like the music needs to know where I come from. And it's, it's, it hasn't been like oh, always like this. You know, they've been cross times and it's times of, of desillusion and depression. And uh, uncertainty that I think is necessary to develop a good state. You have to go through all those phases and uh, never forget that before everything you are, you're a human, you're a person, just like anyone else. So I think I actually, I, I, I should, I need to write this document about what I've been doing for uh, my country, for my fellow man, and for my family. So I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm really, I think this is the time. Looking forward to it. get uh, mails and people tell me hey, you teach, why don't you teach? You should teach. And I was reluctant at, at first because the fact that you know something doesn't mean they have to teach it because that's in that involve the idea, you know, and the way you especially kids, you know, to, to get the attention of the five-year-old is like, wow, this is harder than that, that, that wrestle with life. This is really hard. So I said, okay, I started doing private lessons. And then I said, okay, why not? So, because the students came, came. So I started teaching drums, which is my thing, and then guitar, and then piano, and then singing. And it's been interesting to me because I learned a lot about myself because, like, the human ear. For me, it was a mystery that I had this this kid who wants to say, he said, okay, I just want to give you one note and piano. You want to give it to me. So that way I would know what your range is. Okay. So I placed, like, a single thing, and then he sent, he sent another no, like very far from the sea. I said, no, 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 it's not that, it's this for me. And then we spend the whole hour trying that students sing the note that he's listening to a different thing. So as I, was that, I was really going crazy. And then I bought a book called This Is Your Way in Music. Okay, first of all, if you come like myself, if I, I, I come from a family and musician, my dad is a musician, maybe his dad is a musician, my kids are a musician, maybe his kid, their kids are a musician, because it's my genes, I have music in my genes. And I was listening to music since I was a mom, a mom, you know? So music is, for my brain, music is familiar. Okay, so when I hear a no, my brain goes, ah, that's a F, that's a C, that's a G, that's a, you know, he go, and then my, my body translated to some people that they don't have any relation to music, it's noise. A C note is like a hammer, bang, 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 or a horn, or an electric car. See, then you have to train that takes months and years, and he, he can be done. I mean, that doesn't mean this, this guy is going to be a singer, but he can learn to imitate the sounds that you do listen to. So, so it's taken me a, a, like a couple of years 
to learn that and to say, okay, I can do this without going crazy. So, and I have the love, the passion for teaching, which is a little bit crazy. And when you see a, a, a guy who the kid is playing drumming, he, he doesn't have a good tempo. And then at the end of the semester, the semester he had it, makes you feel better about yourself and about him. So you um, should see in, in, in that song, which is what gives you uh, uh, the pleasure of giving, yeah, like give what you learn to others. You know? So that's why my, my dad did to me when I when I'm doing to my kids. In in early 70s, first for an unknown reason, I, I wanted to be a jazz musician. Maybe because my dad used to tell to take me to those places and to the family. He was an upright bass, really great, great jazz. Jazz, so I grew up seeing these great drummers playing jazz with my dad, so I wanted to be a jazz drummer. So I went to Boston to visit a friend. And he was going to Berkeley and he showed me in school. And I was like, wow, this is like a, a musician's planet. I was like, I, I gotta be here. So it was really expensive, so I applied for that scholarship. So I went there and the booth, Coolithin, was the possibly like next door to New York. And New York has shows every weekend. So I used to drive and see all my heroes playing in small clubs. And, and my, I learned, I think I learned more, more doing that than going to school. Because the school taught me, uh, you know, the music that we went to do, how to read, how to write, how to, uh, to play. But the musicianship is something that you learn in the road. 